Hello and welcome to eBible Fellowship's Evening Bible Studies with your speaker, Chris McCann. If you'd like more information or to hear more studies, visit our website at www.ebiblefellowship.com. And now, with your evening Bible study, here's Chris McCann. Good evening and welcome to eBible Fellowship's Bible study in the book of Revelation. Tonight is study number 28 of Revelation chapter 9. And we're going to be reading verses 14 and 15. Revelation 9, 14 says, Saying to the sixth angel which had the trumpet, Loose the four angels which are bound in the great river Euphrates. And the four angels were loosed, which were prepared for an hour and a day and a month and a year, for to slay the third part of men. Now in our last study we were discussing the four angels or messengers which are said to have been bound in the great river Euphrates and and they were commanded to be loosed and we saw that the language of binding or being bound and loosed often relates to salvation and we went to several passages where God uses this language of a woman being bound low these 18 years to Satan, and she is loosed of her infirmity. Or Lazarus was bound about with grave cloths, but when Christ commanded for him to come forth, he also commanded, loose him, and so on. Now the four angels, and this is angels as a English word that we get from the Greek uh, angeloi, which would uh, be translated as angels or messengers. The four messengers were bound in the great river Euphrates, and Euphrates, we also saw, is a synonym for the great city Babylon. The messengers, four messengers, are typifying God's elect that were bound in Babylon, which would point to the kingdom of Satan, the kingdom of this world, God's elect all over the uh, four points of the compass, all over the earth, who are now loosed. And this took place when God saved the great multitude and brought them out of great tribulation. When someone becomes saved, they have delivered themselves or by the grace of God they have been delivered and they have been loosed from their bondage to sin and Satan, loosed from the kingdom of darkness, loosed from Babylon. And and well now let's move on to verse fifteen. And the four angels were loosed, which were prepared for an hour a day in a month and a year for to slay the third part of men. These four messengers, which typify God's elect, are loosed. And upon their loosing, this has uh, been made ready, or preparation has been made ready by God to slay the third part of men. Now, what does the loosing of four messengers, which would represent God's elect, have to do with slaying the third part of men? And when we think about this, when we uh, consider all of the biblical information, we, we realize that this is once again God emphasizing that the nature of the judgment of the unsaved people of the world, and and especially in this case, the unsaved people within the churches and congregations, the nature of that judgment is that there is no more salvation. And since God saved the great multitude, typified by these four messengers, and, and by the way, we we can know the four messengers are that great multitude because from verses 14 and 15, where uh, God is referring to them as four messengers, to verse 16, where suddenly um, a change in language is made to 200 million, uh, 
they're one and the same. There, there's no uh, movement. There's no language where God says, well, now we're done talking of the four messengers and we'll begin to discuss 200 million. He, he gives no warning, no um, preparation, no inkling of any kind that he is continuing to discuss something else because he is not. He is discussing the same group, the four messengers and the 200 million horsemen that come into view in verse 16 and following are are one and the same. They're speaking of God's elect, that great multitude. And we can know this for certain because look again in verse 15. The four messengers are loosed. They were prepared for an hour, day, month, and a year to slay the third part of men. Then we read of the 200 million in verse 16, and their horses and and uh, fire and brimstone is associated with the 200 million and their horses. And then notice in verse 18 of Revelation 9, by these three was the third part of men killed by the fire and by the smoke and by the brimstone which issued out of their mouths. Well, there it is. The four messengers are prepared to slay the third part of men, and now the 200 million horsemen with their horses that are fire-breathing, and they they also uh, slay the third part of men. They, They accomplished the identical task. Because it's the same group that's in view. The four messengers are another way of referring to the 200 million. And the 200 million are clearly uh, speaking of God's elect. All those whose names were recorded in the Lamb's book of life. And now they, they had been bound in Babylon in sin captivity to sin and Satan, now they have been freed from that captivity. Just as historically the Jews were bound in Babylon for that 70-year period, but and that 70-year period typified the Great Tribulation. Then at the end of the 70 years, what happened? Well, King Uh, Darius, also known as Cyrus of the Medes and the Persians, took the kingdom of Babylon and shortly thereafter issued a proclamation setting all of the Jews free. They could return to Judea. And and you see, previously the Jews, while under the, the king of Babylon's rule, were bound But once Cyrus, who took Babylon at night, um, suddenly, just as the Lord Jesus Christ comes as a thief in the night, once Cyrus took the kingdom, they were set free. They were loosed. And that's exactly what happened at the end of the Great Tribulation period, which concluded on May 21, 2011. No longer were God's elect bound in Babylon of this world, but they had been set free by the coming of Christ, by the completion of his salvation program. All those, again, whose names were in his book of life were now found. The word of God had reached them with that worldwide declaration of Judgment Day, May 21, and God used that to save all of his elect, and and so now they are loosed. And their loosing is used by God as a means of judgment in the day of judgment because their loosing means that there is no more loosing to be done. There is no more salvation to be had. No more grace to be bestowed. No more mercy for God uh, to grant. And no more uh, water of salvation to flow. No more light of the gospel 
of salvation to shine. However, we want to word it and and look at it. It all is, means the same thing. The door is shut now because all of the elect have been brought into the kingdom of heaven. And and that's what the loosing of these four messengers typifying God's elect is pointing to. Well, let's look what God says again in verse 15. And the four messengers were loosed, which were prepared for an hour and a day and a month and a year for to slay the third part of men. Well, let's think about this wording here, that they were prepared, that is the loosing of the four messengers, was um, prepared for an hour, day, month, and a year. You know, when um, we say the judgment day began on May 21, 2011, we are giving a day, the, the 21st day, a month, May, and a year, 2011. So we have three of the four time references that are given here. The only thing we're lacking is an hour. And and yet an hour was put forth. You may remember that um, it was determined that judgment would begin about 6 p.m. Jerusalem time. Now I I uh, honestly can't remember exactly how that was developed, but but it was determined that that should be the time when the judgment would commence. And uh, even though I, I'm not sure how that um, actual time of 6 p.m. Was, was arrived at, and it was then that uh, people were looking for the... Uh, the the great earthquake to occur for outward events to take place and when nothing like that happened well people concluded oh it's 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 wrong um, it's incorrect there is no judgment and yet we have learned that God uh, brought about a spiritual judgment so it very well could have been 6 p.m. May 21 2011 6 p.m. Jerusalem time that the hour began that in which God shut the door and so forth and and uh, no one would have noticed or seen any difference because it was spiritual but there is another interesting hour that that comes into view that uh, I am familiar with and and that is the hour that concludes the day of labor what I mean is that the Bible speaks of uh, 12 hours in a day. We read in John chapter 11, in verse 9, that the Lord Jesus makes this statement. Jesus answered, Are there not 12 hours in the day? If any man walk in the day, he stumbleth not, because he seeth the light of this world. But if a man walk in the night, he stumbleth because there is no light in him. And this is a very interesting statement. The Bible speaks of a day of salvation. And of course, that's not referring to a literal 24-hour period, but to an extended day. Just, Just as we've learned, the judgment day is not literally 24 hours but is taking place over the course of a very likely period of uh, 1,600 days. And and so the day of salvation uh, has uh, had been going on for quite some time. We read in Matthew chapter 20, a parable in which this 12-hour day is uh, put forth. It says in Matthew 20, verse 1, For the kingdom of heaven is like unto a man that is a householder, which went out early in the morning to hire laborers into his vineyard. And when he had agreed with the laborers for a penny a day, he sent them into his vineyard. Now here the householder would be a reference to God. 
and the laborers are God's people that are working in the vineyard, and and the fruit would be um, the elect that are brought forth as as God's people labor in the gospel. Well, it continues in verse three, and he went out about the third hour, and um, and saw others standing idle in the marketplace. Now the um, third hour would be 9 a.m. The day would begin at 6 a.m. And so he goes out and he saw others standing idle in the marketplace and said unto them, Go ye also into the vineyard, and whatsoever is right I will give you. And they went their way. Again he went out about the sixth and ninth hour. And that would be 12 p.m. and 3 p.m. And did likewise. And about the 11th hour, which would be 5 p.m., about the 11th hour he went out and found others standing idle, and saith unto them, Why stand ye here all the day idle? And then he hires these others to work in the vineyard at the 11th hour. Well, let's skip down to verse 8. So when even was come, the Lord of the vineyard saith unto his steward, Call the laborers and give them their hire, beginning from the last unto the first. And when they came, they were hired about the eleventh hour, they received every man a penny. But when the first came, they supposed that they should have received more, and they likewise received every man a penny. And when they had received it, they murmured against the good man of the house, saying, These last have wrought but one hour, and thou hast made them equal unto us which have borne the burden and heat of the day. Now this tells us that that last group that were hired at the 11th hour at 5 p.m. worked but one hour, and that would have brought the time to 6 p.m. and to the 12th hour, the close of the day, and then it speaks of even had come. And, and, well, what does that mean? It means that God here is letting us know that the great tribulation period, which is typified in the book of Revelation in a few places as one hour, is the last hour of the workday in which the gospel was to, uh, to be gotten out into the world. And that's exactly what we, we realize, what we have experienced, that God um, stirred up his people in an unprecedented way, and they went forth with the gospel, proclaiming it all over the earth in a final grand uh, declaration that brought the news of God's word to all of the elect everywhere in the world in order that God could complete his salvation program. Then the Great Tribulation ended, May 21, 2011. The hour of Great Tribulation came to a close. The last hour of the workday concluded. The twelfth hour. Therefore, we can liken Judgment Day spiritually, according to this parable, to 6 p.m., which is exactly the time that uh, had been worked out, uh, Jerusalem time, the the actual, I guess, physical time, we could say, um, when, when it was determined that that judgment would begin. And I don't think that's a coincidence. And also then, the night comes, evening comes, as... Um, the sun is darkened and the moon no longer give its light and so forth. And there's no more spiritual light of the world. Christ has departed from the world as far as bringing the light of salvation. Never again will anyone become saved. And the night, the evening comes. This is why Jesus says in John chapter 9, in uh, verse 4, I must work the works of him that sent me 
while it is day. That is, during the 12-hour period, uh, as Jesus said, are there not 12 hours in the day? The the 12-hour period that typifies the day of salvation. The night cometh when no man can work. And he's referring to himself as, um, remember what was said Earlier in the Gospel of John, in John 6, verse 29, Jesus answered and said unto them, This is the work of God, that ye believe on him whom he has sent. Well, Jesus is the man who, uh, who said in John 9, 4, that he must work the works of him that sent him while it is day, the work of granting faith to sinners, of, of giving them belief of the truth, the work of saving, which is entirely Christ's work. But that's all during the day. Then the night cometh when no man can work. And that can only be a reference to Christ. Who else does the work of salvation? Nobody else. Men think they can do that work, but it is exactly that. Works on their behalf and God says no man is justified by the works of the law. So when it says no man can work, it's referring to the Lord Jesus Christ. He will no longer do the work of granting belief, according to John 6.29. And and that's precisely where we find ourselves now in this time period, in the day of judgment, It is the evening time because, as it says in Revelation 9 and verse 15, that the four messengers were loose, which were prepared for an hour. And we can confidently say 6 p.m., according to the parable of the vineyard. And a day, the 21st, and a month, May, and a year, 2011, is when Judgment Day began. For to slay, that means to kill, the third part of men. The the four messengers are set, they're prepared on that day, precisely that time, to slay the third part of men. Now the third part of men, we're familiar with that language because we encountered it repeatedly back in Revelation chapter 8. Eleven times in Revelation 8, God spoke of bringing judgment on the third part, the the third part of the trees, the third part of the water, the third part of the sun, the moon, and the stars. But never once did he speak of bringing judgment or slaying the third part of men. Only here in Revelation 9 does it say to slay the third part of men, and it repeats it twice. In verse 18, by these three was the third part of men killed. Now, what what can we understand by this? Why the difference? Why the focus on killing the third part of men here and, and really uh, focusing on Uh, Primarily, the language points to the gospel, uh, the light of the gospel, the water of the gospel, and and so forth as we read of the judgment in Revelation 8, the third part of of this and that. Well, uh, one thing we can see that the judgment on the third part totals 13, 11 times in Revelation 8, and two times here in Revelation 9. And it, that points to the judgment upon mankind, upon the professed people of God that comes after 13,000 years of history. And then in 1988, over 10,000 days of judgment, 8,400 days of judging the third part in the churches, 1,600 days in which the third part are killed uh, in the day of judgment for an overall 10,000 days, of com- the completeness of God's judgment upon the third part. But the reason that God specifies men, uh, 
here in Revelation 9 is because finally the, the people of the churches are slain. And now, uh, how can we say that? Or what does that mean? Weren't they slain during the 23-year Great Tribulation period when judgment began at the house of God? Yes and no. The, the judgment began at the house of God and men were dying spiritually in the congregations and yet, it was also always possible for any people, anyone at all, to leave the church, and, and, and as God later commanded his people to do so, and if they had left the church, they could have positioned themselves in the world where the latter rain was falling, and potentially from man's perspective, from our perspective, possibly they could have become saved and not have been slain. And yet any that remain in the congregations throughout that 23-year period or up until the end of that 23-year period, finally they were in a place where God was not saving, where the Holy Spirit was not working, where there was no salvation taking place in any church anywhere in the world. And, and so when the day of transition took, came, May 21, 2011, when uh, the, the day of judgment for the world uh, took place, then all of these people, the third part of men, which would number somewhere around 2 billion were slain because they did not hearken to God. They did not come out of the churches. Therefore, they could not possibly have been saved when God was saving the great multitude. They are not a part of that great multitude because there was no latter rain falling in the churches. And now they went from that bad a spiritual situation to a far worse situation. Now the, the judgment on the churches was complete and judgment began on the world and there was no more salvation anywhere in the world. And, and God had completed his salvation program, saving all of his elect, and there was no more salvation left for them. And this in essence slew the third part of men and we'll see a little later on in revelation 9 that god speaks of the rest of the men not killed by these plagues and that would be referring to the unsaved people outside of the churches not a part of that third part of men and and we'll explain how how that works out and how uh, how that could be uh, in the day of judgment, but um, certainly God is emphasizing this. This is the more stripes for those that that uh, knew the Father's will, that professed to be Christians. They ought to have known better. They should have hearkened to God and believed his word, and yet they did not. And therefore, immediately at the beginning of judgment day, from the very start, they are spiritually killed. It is guaranteed they will die. There is no hope for them. Only God allows or permits that people can pray that the cup might pass from them. But otherwise, they have been slain. Thanks for joining us for eBible Fellowship's Evening Bible Studies. You can hear these studies Monday through Friday over Pal Talk, Skype, eBible Fellowship's webcast audio, or over your phone. For more information or to hear other studies, visit www.ebiblefellowship.com. Until our next study, may the Lord's perfect will be done.